Hello and welcome to another timeless gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Red Black or Rakdos Underworld Breach combo deck. Now if you first take a look at this list, about half of the deck looks like a regular Red Black midrange deck. We've got some of the staples like Mishra's Bauble to give us a bit of card selection, especially alongside all the fetch lands, Lurus to eventually recur it, and then we've got some typical interaction like Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt and Thoughtseize as hand disruption, and then our creatures including Dragon's Rage Channeler, which you're also going to see quite often, and then Deathrite Shaman giving us a bit of extra mana and graveyard interaction, and then of course Orcish Bowmasters, another staple of the format, but then if you take a closer look, you start to see some of the combo pieces, like Stitcher Supplier, a card that could also be decent in a Lurus deck to help fill the graveyard for Channeler and Deathrite, but of course much better if your graveyard is actually being used as a key resource, and that's certainly the case, since Supplier can help fill the graveyard, especially when paired with Altar of Dementia, since we can now sacrifice a creature to mill cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power, so when Supplier enters we mill three, when it dies it mills another three, plus plus maybe one more from Altar, sacrificing it, and the reason we want to fill the graveyard is to eventually combo off with Underworld Breach, a two-man enchantment saying each non-land card in our graveyard has escape, meaning we can exile a number of cards from our graveyard, in this case three other cards, in order to cast that card from the graveyard, and then at the beginning of the end step we have to sacrifice Underworld Breach, so we only have one turn to make use of all those cards in the graveyard, so of course the goal is to completely storm off and eventually kill the opponent with our Tendrils of Agony, which gets copied for each other spell we've cast this turn, so that will drain the opponent for two and gain two each time, and eventually drain them to death. And we can basically set up an infinite combo, of course it's somewhat limited by our library size, once we combine Underworld Breach with Altar of Dementia, Stitcher Supplier, and then we'll also need Dark Ritual to generate a bit of extra mana, of course another key card in this format that can enable all these degenerate combo decks, so with Dark Ritual we can make a bunch of mana, replay Stitcher Supplier from the graveyard after exiling a few cards to the escape, and then with Supplier we get to essentially fuel the Dark Ritual and the Supplier, since we're putting essentially seven cards in the graveyard total once we sacrifice to Altar of Dementia, so that pays for the cards we need to exile with Breach, and then Dark Ritual pays for the mana we need to cast another Dark Ritual and a Supplier, even netting us extra mana, and then eventually we'll mill our Tendrils of Agony, and then we'll be able to cast it with the mana from Ritual. So that's our plan. We also have a few tutor effects to help find these combo pieces. Demonic Tutor can find any card, and Diabolic Intent needs to sacrifice a creature first, but that's not too difficult with the token from Bowmasters or the Bowmasters itself. And then Stitcher Supplier, we're also happy to sacrifice and put more cards in the graveyard. Then another way we can potentially combo off if we don't get Altar plus Supplier is simply by controlling multiple copies of Dragon's Rage Channeler, because whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to surveil one. So with multiple multiple channelers, whenever we cast, let's say, a dark ritual from the graveyard, we now get to add two more to the graveyard, and that can basically keep fueling the combo at least for some time until we find a third channeler, or just cast more stitcher suppliers to fill the graveyard, and then sooner or later we'll find the missing pieces. So yeah, that's kind of our deck in a nutshell, then the mana base, mostly just fetch lands and red-black dual lands. We also have one overgrown tomb which we can search up to enable the green ability on Deathrite Shaman in case we need to exile creatures to gain a bit of life back, and then of course Blood Crypt, Black Cliff Cliffs, a nice dual land that doesn't cost us any life, and then we've got a few basics, two swamps can also be important to help play around Blood Moon, still have a mountain as well since sometimes we want to fetch a painless land with Bloodstain Mire as opposed to fetching and then taking another two damage to shock in a Blood Crypt, and then a Phyrexian Tower is actually pretty nice if we have some spare creatures as we can sacrifice them to add a double black, so now we can potentially generate a little bit of extra mana, or maybe even sacrifice a supplier if we didn't have a way to put it in the graveyard to put more cards in there too. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Between Tutor and Breach we've got quite a few pieces to try and set up the combo. And then since we have a fetch land and a shock land, turn one we could kind of use the bobble trick where we take a look at our top card. If we don't like it we can fetch it away. Although don't actually have a one drop to uh, cast right away. Opponent with a watery grave untapped. Okay, so can bobble myself for starters. Deathrite coming up. 
would be a decent draw. Can maybe gather some information from the opponent's deck. Stitcher Supplier, so it might be a self mill kind of dredgeless dredge deck, which explains the heavy mulligan since it's a deck that tends to mulligan quite a bit. Okay, so play another bobble and pass. And our opponent had a gaze to fill the graveyard. So turn two, we could see a glimpse to fill their graveyard. Deathrite is potentially a relevant graveyard hate, can get a overgrown tomb, so we can exile their creatures as well. Could have maybe bobbled before their draw step. Right, founding, so let's see if they also have a glimpse in hand as their last card. Could still easily win them the game. No opponent starts from chapter 2. Okay, that's good to know. We'll have a look here. Grizzly Salvage can also fill the graveyard for them. Okay, so... Thinking we're just going for Deathrite here. Now that we drew Dark Ritual, we could also just try and set up our own combo. And just cast a Demonic Tutor in the meantime. And then what do I even tutor for? It's either Channeler or we want to try and combine Altar with um, Stitcher Supplier to try and go off. But we're still missing one of the two pieces. So I'm not hitting, just Death Rites and then Fetch for Overgrown Tomb. So we have access to a bit more mana next turn or we can start exiling their stuff. Opponent casting Gaze for one mana, potentially. Okay, so they might have a land for Grizzly Salvage. And Double Blood Ghasts will be coming back if that's the case. And then uh, they'll also get a Prize Amalgam, so yeah, it's starting to add up. At least Bowmasters is pretty good against Bloodgast. Opponent milling Price Amalgam. At least that one won't come back until my end step, so I do have the opportunity to exile it with Deathrite. Since it didn't see Bloodgast entering the battlefield, but it will see the second Amalgam entering. So we'll get our Overgrown Tomb. And so now if I want to exile Amalgam, I would have to do it now. And then we still have Bowmasters as a play we can make, so that seems fine. So we'll pass a turn. I would love to find my own Stitcher Supplier to kind of complete our combo. Mills another Amalgam. Can shoot one Blood Ghast. And maybe block the other with our army. Could also keep the army in case we draw Diabolic Intent, so we have something else to sacrifice. But it's not like the opponent's drawing cards to trigger Bowmasters. Flashback Gaze. If they find Creeping Chill, they'll be able to get back Silver Smote Ghoul times two at least. And there it is. Alright, that's the problem. And our opponent also gets back Double Blood Ghasts before Deathrite can exile them. Well, this is uh, kind of the worst case scenario. Opponent's got their whole graveyard in play. Now what can we do? Deathrite can make a mana, so we have five, six, seven basically with the Dark Ritual. Problem is we're missing Channeler or the Altar combo with uh, Stitcher Supplier to um, keep filling the graveyard to go off with Tendrils. 
Yeah, Lurus feels kind of slow here. So I might just have to commit to the tutor. And then get Alter. And then hope to mill Stitcher Supplier along the way. So we'll pass a turn, and then we can bolt Amalgam Exile it with Death Rites. And then, do I want to trade Bowmasters for Ghoul? Sure. And a glimpse on themselves. Okay, let's respond with Death Rites. And hope our opponent doesn't mill double creeping chill to kill us. And I saw at least one of them. Triple Narcomiba as well, so... Yep, we have to combo here, or we're dead next turn. That much is clear. So let's Ritual. Fetch for Swamp is fine. We'll make mana. And then we can Breach, replay Tutor. So we can get Stitcher Supplier. Combine it with Altar. And then we can combo off with a Dark Ritual as well. And hopefully we don't time out. We've got Altar, so yeah, we've got everything in place. So now it's just fighting the clock. Dark Ritual. And then replay Supplier. And eventually we'll find Tendrils. Also, tutor for it. Three more, plus one from Altar, so it kind of pays for itself. Replay Supplier. Not sure what my storm count is at this point. Might be high enough where we can already just shoot her for it. But I'll just keep going. Don't have too many cards left in library anyways. This is the last time casting Supplier. 
Still plenty of cards in Graveyard to Ritual and make some extra mana, and then cast the Tendrils. There it is. Make sure not to exile it here. Got four mana. Cast tendrils. And there it is. Target the opponent a bunch. And storm counts 14, so that's more than enough. Okay, close one here against Sultai Self Mill. We just waited until the last possible turn to give us the most amount of resources and mana to try and combo off. And yeah, we ended up needing every last piece. Turns out you don't need to draw Stitcher Supplier when you can shoot her for it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a uh, fine hand. Tutor for Altar might be the play here, and then we've got everything else we need. For now, maybe Thought sees the opponent after bobbling them, so we have a bit more information. They might be holding a Once Upon a Time. So if they do have a Once Upon a Time, if we bobble them and they cast Once Upon a Time before the draw step, we lose out on a little bit of information. And get our Black Red Dual Land, keep Bloodstay Mire, which can fetch both basics. Tiny chance we also want to get Overgrown Tomb. So we might see them cast a Once Upon a Time right now. Yep. Could have been a reason to not sank the bobble yet, to kind of see their next draw step instead, but I uh, don't think it matters too much. Alright, points on the Titan ramp deck. And definitely taking a natural order here. Opponent's good castle for a bit of mana acceleration as well. Okay, so this is kind of a race. If our opponent gets a Titan in play, then they can also get a Bujuka Bonk to exile our graveyard, so that's relevant. We do have a Thought Seize to take Titan, but with Empath they can just get another one. There was a small consideration for taking Kami, I suppose, but uh, natural order is a bit scarier. So now, can tutor for altar, and then I guess we still need a dark ritual at some point, or we can mill it with Stitcher Supplier, which might also get it done. So no need for Overgrown Tomb in this matchup. Let's get Altar. Possible that getting Ritual is better, since then we can Ritual make a bunch of mana, and then just use Tutor to get the Altar afterwards. But we would need a pretty full graveyard for that to work. And we're more likely to mill a Dark Ritual naturally with a Supplier. Their opponent with another Kami, meaning that we probably want to Thought Seize the Titan now that they didn't cast Empath, so they can't cast it next turn. So Supplier plus Thought Seize is going to be the play. Would like to draw a few lanes or mill Dark Ritual. So this only really buys us one turn, assuming they draw land. Yeah, the mana situation's a bit of a concern, since we're going to need a lot of mana the turn we combo. So that's kind of our limiting factor, and these removal spells are not very helpful. So Empath, get Titan. There's an argument for next turn just casting Breach for value if we draw land to replay Thoughtseize and take Titan, if we don't think we can beat it. 
And Dark Ritual is good. So if we Ritual, Breach, two mana floating, Ritual again, yeah, take it from there. We might be able to combo off. So we need to start by casting a Dark Ritual. Now we can play Altar. Mill myself with Supplier. And yeah, we have guaranteed lethal, assuming we don't time out. Can also Thought System in the meantime. But I don't want to unnecessarily exile cars from my graveyard. We can see the storm count now on tendrils, so that helps. So just replay another supplier for now. And this shouldn't take too long. So we need a storm count of 10 to kill them. So next we have to cast a Dark Ritual again to make more mana. And cast another one. And then we should be able to Tendrils. Storm counts 10. Could thought seize them first just because, but let's not waste any time. And then I still have a black floating, so I could still combo once again and replay the same tendrils. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with uh, promising hands. Channeler into Double Bobble can already fill the graveyard quite a bit. Opponents maybe with a similar start. Not opposed to just taking out their Channeler before we play ours, and then I can wait on Bobble. Diabolic Intent is what they know about. Can't stay away is interesting, not sure what to make of that. Could be a Grease Fang deck, perhaps. For now, do we Bolt or do we develop our own Channeler? Not opposed to Bolt the Channeler, and then next turn we can proceed. Keep pushing, because they're playing larger creatures we need to take out. Another Channeler. And a Thought Seize. So we could Thought Seize to check for removal, or we can just play Channeler, Double Bobble, and then either Fatal Push or Thought Seize. So we have Instant, Land, about to have Artifact, and then Sorcery would enable Delirium, so we don't have to worry about Bowmasters. So... Yeah, I don't think we thought seize first if they want to take out channel or so be it. So we're gonna see them fetch, take out my channeler. There's also grows. I guess if we wanted to we could push their channeler now before they get another surveil trigger. Right, opponent's got the bolts. I think I would rather Thought Seize while they still have cards in hand. And yeah, Parhelion does point towards Grease Fang now. Diabolic Intense, don't need another one. See what they have on top before we decide. 
All right, Pyromancer is a good one. Although we can't thought seize it. So, gotta take a Grease Fang in case they have one here. Another can't stay away. Take Pyromancer. And then it can just bring it back for two mana instead. Yeah, so this is all kind of bad. I mean, we know it, they're top decking another Pyromancer. So I guess I'll just take the sorcery here. And then we can wait on sacking the other bobble. Tendrils is not particularly exciting. Your opponent does get to draw two. Now we can see what they're drawing next. Scrap work mutt. Another thought sees, but we're falling behind on board, so it's not ideal. And then I'm probably pushing the channeler, so I may as well do it now. And now we do have the upside of a companion, whereas the opponent does not. Thoughtseize takes, I imagine, Diabolic Intent. Nope, goes for Tendrils. So we're at 8. If we go for Lurus, next turn we can play it and get back Bobble at the very least. We'll be at 3, so then we can still block and try and survive. Versus Deathrite, which can block a 1-1, one, one, take 4. Now let's go for Lurus. And then drawing a land would be nice. An untapped one, ideally. Even if it costs two life, it could be worthwhile. Then we could go Lurus, play Channeler. Although in a racing situation where we're behind, Channeler being forced to attack is not ideal. So maybe it's still Lurus, Bobble. And then if I take two down to one... I'm dead if our opponent attacks all out. Let's see. We can block Pyromancer, block a token. No, I guess that's fine. And I'm going to be forced to block with Lurus regardless. Thoughts he's coming up. So that's going to take our Diabolic Intent, assuming they even cast it. So as the dust settles, we're no longer going to have a Lurse. No opponent just passes. That's nice of them. So now we can play another Bobble if we'd like. Don't actually have green mana for Deathrite to gain us life. So Bobble vs. Channeler is actually somewhat interesting. I guess we don't mind the extra pressure here. And then in combination with Deathrite, we can try and close out the game. So if they find an untapped land, they can can't stay away on the Pyromancer to draw two. Opponent falls to seven in order to do so. So yeah, now two Deathrite activations and an attack from Channeler would be lethal. So that should just be game. Gotta get our value. Attack for three. And Deathrite will get it done. Awesome. So our companion making all the difference here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand is reasonable. 
facing Gigantha, so assuming the domain deck. Which uh, can be kind of tough since they apply lots of early pressure, they've got a few counter spells usually, and some removal as well, so they've got a decent amount of interaction while probably being faster than us if they can uh, keep up that interaction, that is. For now, breeding pool, could see a wild nacoddle. Okay. So this is my chance to maybe thought seize a uh, relevant two drops since we don't have removal to take it out. Or we could play death right so we can double spell more effectively going forward. I think that's still worthwhile. There's already a fetch line in the graveyard for us. And then I suppose we can bobble them. Could have also waited until they take the draw step so we have even more information when casting a Thought Seize next turn, presumably. But our opponent was gonna shuffle anyway. I guess we could have waited until their end step. Ragavan's annoying, but we can take it out with the Bowmasters, so I'm not gonna trade for it. Put found Bobble, that's good value. And a bolt on death right. Alright, a bit of a setback. So I could double thought seize while the coast is clear. Opponent sacking the bobble now to play around our bowmasters. Otherwise we could have uh, triggered it twice. Hmm. Yeah, I think we keep a Bowmasters. Opponent's unlikely to play Ragavan into it, though. So maybe this just double Thoughtseize. Then we'll be at 9. Take 3, down to 6. It's gonna be painful. But uh, if I don't do it now... I guess we could also Thoughtseize and then play Supplier to get in the way of Ragavan. Which means taking a Leyline Binding or another Wild Nacoddle. Yeah, let's take the Binding. Can also get rid of our altar. And then we need to find Underworld Breach, pretty much. We've got altar plus supplier, and then I guess eventually Dark Ritual will be necessary. So there's the Nakadal we knew about. Still one unknown card in hand. And uh, sure, I'll trump. If I wait until I play Altar, I guess I can mill one more card. Yeah, I guess we can take three. Upside of jumping now is that they're more incentivized to run out Ragavan, but they're gonna do so anyway. And now Diabolic Intent, also good reason to hang on to Stitcher Supplier. So to Thoughtseize or not to Thoughtseize? If I go to six, then double Nakadal's lethal, so I don't think we go for it. They might also have a Stubborn Denial in hand, I suppose. Yeah, if I Bowmasters, we shoot Ragavan, can Chum Nakadal take three. So then if they have a Tribal Flames, we're just dead. Alright, may as well. Is your opponent maybe considering casting the Stubborn Denial now? So that's actually a mistake, because now we don't lose two life. So, decline to pay. And then we can just pass it back. Bowmaster's Ragavan, I think, still the way to go. Even though it doesn't develop my combo plan. Alternative is Alter, but I don't want to block with Supplier because we want to sack it to the Diabolic Intent. So yeah, let's go for Bowmaster's. Okay, we now know our opponent didn't draw anything relevant. I think it will still chump one while Nakadal. Even though if we wait on Altar, we can mill one extra card. So, how does next turn look like? Assume we don't draw land, play Altar, pass, or we can Diabolic Intent to get Underworld Breach. And then we'll still have two blockers left. 
which will both have to chump. And then next turn we breach, hoping to have milled a dark ritual, pretty much. And do we have breach in the graveyard? We don't. I guess I can take six. And then next turn chump. Well, drawing the dark ritual helps. So now if we ritual... Intent for Breach, replay Ritual, then we should be able to combo from there. Okay. Could also Sang Stitch your Supplier now. And then we'll start by replaying Dark Ritual. Leaving Stitch your Supplier in the graveyard. Then play Supplier. Replay Dark Ritual, and then we can cast Altar. Could have also left Fatal Push in the graveyard to just kill all the Wild Nacodles, but we can just win this turn, so... Well, let's go for it. Suspenseful game. Ponons had a few bricks near the end. And they could have top decked a lethal burn spell. And yeah, we somehow always end up comboing with Supplier and Altar. We can also potentially get there with multiple copies of Dragon's Rage Channeler, letting us surveil each time. Time for another Dark Ritual, make some more mana. Haven't milled our tendrils yet, but we'll get there soon. a tutor, which could also search up our tendrils, but uh, with nine cards left, we should mill it soon. There it is. So now we just gotta cast Dark Ritual, and our opponent sees a writing on the wall and concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is keepable. Turn one could even go with a fancy line of Dark Ritual, so we can Thoughtsees and Bowmasters or Deathrite. I think I'm keeping Dark Ritual for the turn we try and combo. But we'll see. For now, just play Deathrite. Good chance our opponent plays a fetch line, so next turn we can Thoughtsees and Bowmasters. Turn one island brainstorm. Yeah, the Dark Ritual Bowmasters plan could have worked out. Imagine keeping up Dark Ritual, opponents goes for Brainstorm. But uh, yeah, Brainstorm hasn't been super popular because of Bowmasters. So for now, I guess we thought seize. And our opponent a self-mill deck, okay. So Glimpse is a card we want to take. Opponent will still be able to Founding, but then we can death right to exile the Glimpse before they get a chance to cast it. Alright, so first time seeing Brainstorm in this build, but uh, also makes sense. So Deathrite can chill. If our opponent fetches, and then we can Bowmasters. So now they only have Supplier and the Mill 4 from Founding. Now we would love to get some green mana for Deathrite, so if we find our Overgrown Tomb or Fetchland. They found Creeping Chill and that's it. I guess if Deathrite exiles Creeping Chill, what happens? I'm not actually sure. They may exile it. Maybe it actually prevents the damage. I'm just kind of curious. Alright, that's how that works. Good to know. So next up, I guess we want to exile their 
glimpse before they get a chance to cast it. And then if they actually want to brainstorm instead, we can Dark Ritual Bowmasters in response. So we'll wait for them to cast it. Okay. Don't mind if I do. Kind of an unusual line. But a pretty effective one, I think. Can still fatal push a creature if it shows up. This could be a game where we diabolic intent for a lightning bolt to just close out the game. For now supplier we could also fatal push. Although that's gonna mill three more cards. So should I fatal push now? Now oh, let's wait. If they mill more blood ghasts then they will come back as well. So for now they get two of them back. And then before the floating mana goes away, I think we do want a fatal push supplier so we can keep attacking. And hope they don't mill anything too devastating. Narcomiba will be a blocker. Okay, and there's a lightning bolt I was talking about. So what if we bolt Narcomiba, attack for five, Deathrite can drain for two. I mean, I assume Narcomiba's blocking Bowmasters every time. So I think we should uh, bolt it now. And then activate Deathrite. Just trying to think if I want to somehow Diabolic Intent here with the Dark Ritual. I don't think so. Let's just pass. Another Supplier. So we can keep up Deathrite to maybe exile a Creeping Chill. Like right now. So they don't get the Silver Smote Ghoul back and more importantly they don't gain the life. Yeah, Deathrite's being a pain for the dredge deck. So they have a blocker. But now we could make mana with Deathrite. I guess we drew the bolt and there's only one in the deck. No, I guess there's a second one. Since we have a split with Fatal Push, but we're favoring Bolt. Just because uh, it can also be a finisher alongside Underworld Breach. So yeah, we can make mana with Deathrite. Intent for Bolt and just Bolt him. Or we can attack and then drain them with Deathrite. I guess that works too. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and uh, sure, we can keep this. Could use a few more combo pieces for sure. And then I think we'll do the bobble trick. So we can take a look at our top card. If we like it, play Shockland. If we don't like it, we can fetch. Channeler is okay. Yeah, I guess we can keep that one. A bit light on ways to enable it, but at least one lightning bolt and then supplier can enable delirium pretty quickly. Opponent blue-green with a gilded goose. So we could see some three mana planeswalkers. So yeah, if we fetch we can double channeler and bolt which seems worthwhile. And then I'll get an overgrown tomb. No, I guess it doesn't work since we need triple red. I want to delay a planeswalker if possible. And they could easily have an Oko here. If they're playing Gilded Goose. And then Dark Ritual, good to put in the graveyard. Don't need it in hand. Bowmasters eh, is okay, but uh, I guess that's already enough for a concession. I'll take it. 
All right, so I'm going to see this combo deck go off a few times, and it somehow always happened with Stitcher Supplier and Alter, so that one of Alter proving to be quite valuable for the combo. Now, of course, we can also get there with our Dragon's Rage Channeler, even if we only have one in play, maybe play Underworld Breach and then get one back from the graveyard right away, and then with multiple uh, surveil triggers each time, we can usually keep the graveyard full. So yeah, there's a few ways to go about it. But overall, this seems like a very rewarding deck to learn learn how to play since there's a ton of different lines and a lot of ways you can try to kill the opponent, whether it's with damage or with a combo and tendrils. And then of course Breach, just a good value card in some situations, even if you don't fully combo off. So yeah, pretty happy with where this build ended up, of course already quite popular on the ranked ladder, so expect to face it quite often. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!